Hi, this is Dr. Kurt Wohler for Integrative Medicine Academy. The title of this video is Trichothecene Toxicity and Related Health Problems. So trichothecenes are a large family of fungal metabolites, also known as mycotoxins, and they're primarily produced from uh, certain molds like Fusarium, Stachybotrys, but a few others, Myrophysium, uh, Trichoderma, Cephalosporium, etc. Now, there could be a number of sources of this, this type of mold exposure. So, for example, Fusarium mold is a common contaminant of many grain products, so barley, corn, oats, wheat, for example. Stachybotrys can be acquired from mold damage a building material, whether that's a home, a, an office building, a school. And then there are other sources, probably more rare, poisonous mushroom, for example, that produces reordin and verrucarin mycotoxins. Now, as I mentioned before, stachybotrys is relatively common, probably not as common as mold like fusarium or aspergillus, but this is the the black mold that often people refer to it. It can grow on high cellulose and low nitrogen materials such as fiberboard, gypsum board, for example. And it really needs a constant source of moisture. So in order for it to really thrive. Now, a number of different mycotoxins will show up. Verrucarin, for example, Reoridin, which are actually in a group of those respective mycotoxins. The images you see here is from the Great Plains Laboratory mycotox profile. <clears throat> and they're either described as what's called macrocyclic or non-macrocyclic trichothecenes. And this distinguishing feature here of these macrocyclic trichothecenes is they have this extended sort of kind of, you know, sort of, you know, interesting looking ring structure coming off of sort of a parent uh, chemical group. Now, there is a specific trichothecene called T2, which is extremely toxic. Okay, it does not have that macrocyclic ring, so it would be considered non-macrocyclic. And there's some other interesting aspects with regards to trichothecene chemistry that is important to understand. And one of this has to do with what's called an epoxide ring. It's this triangular shape um, structure, this ring structure that has an oxygen uh, off of one corner. So this would be sort of the basic uh, sort of foundation of a trichothecene backbone. And of course, we know we can form a macrocyclic ring as an extension. But the real distinguishing feature of trichothecenes has to do with what's called this 12 to 13 epoxy ring. This epoxide is you know, highly unstable, and so it can be very reactive chemically. Also, the toxicity of Trichothecenes has to do with different types of functional side groups, such as acetyl group or a hydroxyl group, for example. It also has a double bond between carbon-9 and carbon-10, which is an attack point for certain chemicals to try to break down the ring structure or render it less reactive. So epoxides are toxic because they're highly reactive. What that means is they can generate different reactive oxygen species and free radicals. And this reactivity in biological systems makes them mutagenic, so they can alter DNA. Now, all of us have, and in the world of chemistry, there are things called nucleophiles. A nucleophile is nucleus loving. A nucleophile provides electrons for creating a new chemical bond. So for in our body, for example, We've got thiol and hydroxide ions that will attack a nucleophile. 
or excuse me, act as a nucleophile. And what they'll do is they can attack an epoxide ring and open it up. And opening up that epoxide ring helps it to become less reactive. So for example, there is a chemical uh, called squalene that gets converted to cholesterol. It has an epoxide ring. And so that epoxide ring gets converted to a hydroxyl side group. Now, epoxide reactivity within nucleic acid pairing is very important. So guanine to cytosine pairing, which is two pairing of nucleotides in the DNA can alter appropriate amino acid production. So it basically alters the way proteins are formed. Now, T2 toxin is an extremely toxic form of a trichothecene. And it has adverse effects within the nervous system. So it can cause what's called apoptosis of the pituitary or damage astrocytes. Astrocytes are important because they help to maintain proper levels of glutamic acid in the synapse of the cell. Too much glutamate can cause overstimulation of neurons. In the liver, they help against, or trichothecenes can also trigger apoptosis, so programmed cell death, for example. They can cause reactive oxygen species damage leading to mitochondrial problems. In the immune system, these things are also damaging. The kidneys can become damaged by T2, as well as the skin, as well as the reproductive system. <clears throat> so, and, and you really could think of that almost of all trichothecenes but particularly T2. A lot of people, the longer they have trichothecenes in their present, plus at higher dosages, will usually start to develop some type of immune nervous system or liver dysfunction problem. Now, one of the ways that we can prevent or at least reduce some of the toxic effects of trichothecenes is preventing their absorption. And trichothecenes are what are called amphipathic. And that means they're both hydrophilic and lipophilic. They, they can easily move through a cell membrane of a particular cell. So binders of various sorts like clays, bentonite clay, for example, activated charcoal, zeolites can help bind trichothecenes within the digestive tract and prevent their absorption into our body. And that's very important because these trichothecenes are highly absorbed from the digestive system as well as through the skin. One of the other things that's important to understand about any of these mycotoxins, including trichothecenes, is the way that they're broken down and metabolized through our liver from phase one to phase two we can see that oxidation reduction and hydrolysis reactions, for example, glutathione conjugation carried about also with a wide variety of different nutrients is critically important. And so providing our patients with good nutrition, good foundational supplementation is very important. Thiols are important, which we get from garlic, onions, cruciferous vegetables, because they also help in the conjugation or the conversion of rendering a trichothecene less toxic. <clears throat> so glutathione plays a big role in trichothecene detoxification, whether that's done orally, transdermally, or intranasal, uh, intranasally, primarily through liposomal glutathione which is a very common source of oral glutathione. So as I mentioned before, this thiol acts as a nucleophile attacking the epoxide side group, opening it up, rendering it less toxic. If you want to learn more about the toxicity of trichothecenes, there's a much longer presentation on the Great Plains Laboratory website and go to greatplainslaboratory.com and look under their webinar library, look under my name, Dr. Kurt Wohler, uh, for this specific lecture called The Toxicity of Trichothecenes Insights into this Unique Group of Mycotoxins.
We also get into the discussion of mold and mycotoxins, including heavy metals, chemicals, detoxification strategies, supplements, etc., in our very comprehensive toxicity mastery course offered through Integrative Medicine Academy. For more information, you can go to toxicitymasterycourse.com. If you are a healthcare practitioner, whether you're an MD, DO, naturopath, chiropractor, nutritionist, health coach, you're welcome to participate in our member web, membership website called Functional Medicine Clinical Rounds, where you can interact with us, myself, uh, Dr. Wooler, my partner, Dr. Trecatella, on one-on-one -on -one basis, if you like, from lab consults to clinical troubleshooting, case presentations. We also have a wide variety of educational material within this website as well. Plus, there is a forum within the Functional Medicine Clinical Rounds com website where you can post questions to us on a daily basis. If you have any inquiries into uh, questions, excuse me, into some of our other mastery courses through Integrated Medicine Academy, please check out the website at integrativemedicineacademy.com. You can also email us at integrativemedicineacademy at gmail.com. Again, I'm Dr. Kurt Wohler for Integrated Medicine Academy. Thank you.